for Ferdy Pacheco and earlier on ringside many of you saw Vinny Pazienza the pride of Cranston Rhode Island win by unanimous decision over Harry Arroyo in fact one judge had it 50 to 29 so Vinny Pazienza with his 19th victory he is now 19 at one now coming up later on here on NBC's Sports World it'll be a matchup of Marlon Magic Band Starling defending his USBA welterweight crowd going against Johnny Bump City Bumpus uh, the one-time junior welterweight champ and Ferdy this is a matchup of two guys who have been stars and stumbled along the way in Starling's case uh, certainly no disgrace. He lost two tough decisions to the champion Donald Curry. Uh, Bumpus looking to make it uh, from two years ago up in Buffalo, New York, looking to make the turn when he lost his crown at the hands of Gene Hatcher. Yeah, and at that time, he was having trouble being a junior welter. He just didn't have the energy to go that uh, distance, so he got stopped by Hatcher more from exhaustion than anything else. Now he steps up in his natural class, class welterweight, but can he take a welterweight punch if he couldn't take a junior welterweight punch? And once again, we have the added feature that we will be passing on the official judges scoring round by round. And this time, it'll be to everybody. The crowd here will hear the scoring. So will the fighters, and so will our NBC audience. All right, so it'll be Bump City and the Magic Band that is coming up later on. Uh, he was going to be one hell of a fighter. Bump has stepped out of the pro scene with national attention as he debuted on NBC's Tomorrow's Champions. And made a quick impression. And it is Rashad asks why, and Pearl points to the eye of Mike Rashad. Winning his next 17 fights, Bumpus could do no wrong until he crossed gloves with a determined Michael Bradley. Recovering from that shot, Bumpus KO'd Bradley and went on to capture the vacant WBA junior welterweight title by defeating Lorenzo Garcia. And then a night that saw Johnny Bumpus lose his title, a night he'll never forget his first title defense against Gene Hatcher, the challenger's hard-hitting left, stripping Bumpus of his crown and his confidence. Uh, after losing that fight, I did lose confidence and uh, after getting a few wins a few good wins then the confidence is back on top where it should be now a full welterweight Bumpus's newfound confidence will be tested by the elusive and hard-hitting Marlon Starling and Johnny Bumpus feels there can be no more losses I think if I was to lose the fight I really have to contemplate on uh, getting out of the game and and uh, possibly taking a job on or, or something of that nature because um, I'm trying to get back to the top and this setback would really, you know, make things difficult for me. So but. Coming up later on Sports World, Hartford, Connecticut's magic man, Marlon Starling, took to boxing at age 11 and following an amateur record of 97 and 13, he turned pro in 1979. Undefeated in 23 fights, 15 by knockout, Starling wore a champion's belt for the first time when he disposed of Kevin Morgan in round one to take the USBA welterweight title in July of 82. Four months later, Starling met Donald Curry in a USBA NABF title unification. But there was more at stake down the road. Sugar Ray Leonard would soon retire his WBA and WBC crowns. And the winner of Starling Curry would be in line to challenge. Starling lost on a split decision. Curry went on to take the WBA title. 1984 was a rocky year for Marlon Starling. Another loss to welterweight champ Donald Curry. And a surprising loss to Pedro Vallea. But two straight KOs in 86 have turned Starling's sights back to the welterweight title. Marlon. You're more of a knockout fighter than Bumpus is. Do you go for the knockout? No, I don't. I think when it comes to combat, I, I fight to put punches together, and, you know, I try to hurt you with anything I can hurt you with. But like I said, if it comes, it comes. Are you worried about a decision in this fight? Johnny Bumpus wins close decisions. He's such a superior boxer. Do you then try to go for a knockout, or do you think you can win a decision over Bumpus? I, I don't think the fight will be that close. All right. We will have the privilege of knowing along with you because we're going to know the scores at the end of each round. Will that help you 
or hurt you? Are you interested in knowing the score? No, it really, uh, it really wouldn't make me a difference one way or the other. I think I can, I would know it inside the ring. But if you did know that you were behind, would it cause you to fight harder? Would you try harder? Would you try different techniques, different strategies if you were behind? I won't be behind. <laughs> I wish I had your confidence, but <laughs> the, the facts have proven over the last few months that sometimes a fighter thinks he's ahead and he's not. What? But you will know. What if you're behind? Uh, I'm still going to do what I have to do to be successful. I'm a, I'm a very cautious fighter. You know, I won't try to, you know, I want to do what I have to do to win the fight. I'm not going to let a judge or an uh, ink pen stop me from doing anything. It might look like this guy's is hitting me with some good shots or throwing on the arms. I can feel in, his, in this guy what I'm doing. So maybe I might fall to one round. Believe me, he will fall to the pain. The fight record of 37-3, and 3, 22 by knockout. His last fight last month, he stopped Ralph Twinning in the seventh round. In fact, Twinning is a southpaw starling. Looking at the fight as a tune-up for facing the left-hander Johnny Bumpus, who comes in at 28 and 1, 20 by knockout. He comes off a third-round KO last February. We'll be back in the direction of the ring. Johnny Bumpus out of Tacoma, Washington, now living in Mount Laurel, New Jersey. One-time WBA and USBA junior welterweight champion, now fighting as a welterweight. Bump City, the gold medal winner of the 1980 U.S. Olympic Trials in Atlanta. He won the gold in the 139-pound late welterweight division. And many consider him to be the class of the 1980 Olympic Trials. He's won his last six since he dropped... His title fight stopped by Gene Hatcher in the 11th round. That was back in June of 1984. And today, Johnny Bumpus going up against Marlon Starling. The lad who's won his last five after being upset by Pedro Malaya. Losing a 12-round majority decision back in June of 84. His other two losses, his record of 37-3, and three, were both championship bouts by decision to the champion Donald Curry in October of 82 and then in February of 84. Here's Marlon Starling out of Hartford, Connecticut. Marlon Starling displaying the USBA welterweight championship belt. Now, let's go to the ring announcer, Frank Carpano. Ladies and gentlemen, next on the card, a 12-round USBA welterweight title fight. The judges for this afternoon's fight, Al DeVito, Thomas Kazmarek, and Charles Spina. The referee, the man in charge, Vinny Renoni. And now the fighters. First, the challenger. In the blue corner, from Mount Laurel, New Jersey, weighing in at 147 pounds, Johnny Bumpus. Bumpus. And in the red corner, from Hartford, Connecticut, weighing in at 146 pounds, the champion, Marlon Starling. Starling. Referee is Vinny Ranoni. And he will bring the two fighters together. The scoring under the 10-point must system. No standing eight count. Three knockdown rule in effect. Three knockdowns in one round. And the fight is over. There is a mandatory eight for the knockdown. And the bell does not save the fighter except in the final round. Some uh, complex work being handled here by uh, Lou Duva handling the shoelaces of this fighter, Johnny Pompas. The instructions earlier, I want you to pay attention to my warnings. Shake hands. 12-round contest, shake hands. My Pompas with the four-inch height advantage. And a slight reach advantage. This is scheduled for 12. Crowd of 10,000 here at the Civic Center in Providence, Rhode Island. 
scoring is handled by the three judges, Al DeVito, Thomas Kasmarek, Charles Smino. Alan Starling's roster of victories, very impressive. He's beaten eight world-ranked contenders. Starling's people ask the question of Donald Curry is the best boxer pound for pound of the world today is uh, many feel he is. Where does Paul of the Magic Man read? That he lost two close decisions to Curry in title fights. Starling, as he mentioned to you earlier, would like one more shot at Curry. An admirable am ambition, but I just wonder what he can do differently to win. Uh, right now, he's got his own problem in front of him. Buffus, as he had said in the pre-fight interviews, is going to try to control his fight with his left hand. In the opening rounds, his jab. He has not kept up Starling so far. Both men fighting in close. Buffus also switching up as he uh, opens up the bout. Came out as a southpaw, then went conventional, now back. And we will be running down the judges scoring round by round once again for this bout. We'll be passing on the official scoring, and it will be announced to the crowd. This is a fight that might make a difference the scoring might make a difference because it will be close these rounds even as this first one starts you see a little ebb and flow between both fighters and it's going to be very difficult right, right, to score this fight and therefore each fighter is going to have to know whether they're ahead or not in order to change their tactics minute left in this first round particularly mindful of the defense of Marlon Starling. Since everybody comes out and punches, but all they're hitting is my gloves and my hand. They don't hit me in the face, and they don't hit the side. They're just hitting my arms. Now watch how many punches land on his arms and on his gloves. Most of Buffett's punches have been to those gloves. Very few between the gloves to land on the face of Marlon Starling. Starling's head is in there. Much like Frankie Warren's was in last week's fight. Head first, he's coming in. Vince Renoni will not have too much of that before he warns. Johnny Bumpus is a southpaw, but his best punch, a right hook rather than the inside left. Usually very cool, very low-key in the ring. Final seconds, first round. And 42, 42. You forgot the 42, boom, boom, 42, and boot. Okay? My feet. Okay. Relax. Now, we'll be visiting in the corner of Ball and Stalling from time to time during the fight, but we will not be able to pick up uh, what is being discussed. Ladies and gentlemen, right, here's the scoring of that first round. Judge number one scores it 10-9, Bumpus. Judge number two scores it. 10-9, Bumpus. And judge number three scores it. 10-9, Bumpus. Well, 10-9 ten round, ten round for Johnny Bumpus. Getting back to what is uh, what will be taking place in the corner of Marlon uh, Starling. His uh, corner men have all kinds of uh, codes in terms of what they're attempting to relate. Uh, be it numbers or names, so uh, I know the fight doctor will try to uh, break down that code uh, during the course of the bout. I think that's so silly. People have used numbers or codes. The fighter can barely understand English when he's fighting. I mean, his mind is so concentrated on what he's doing, he doesn't hear people hollering 1, 2, 1. 1.5 and all those things. Now, Bumpus figures to box his way all the way through. Marlon... For his part, Starling wants to take the punches on the gloves and begin to inflict punishment after two or three rounds. He's willing to gamble that, he said. And uh, I don't know if that's going to be a mistake when uh, Bumpus has taken so many close decisions on his boxing ability. Now the right hand by Starling got in. Starling also uh, talking during the course of the week of uh, what he feels is 
the weak chin of Johnny Bumpus, and there have been questions about uh, the chin. Michael Bradley put him down a couple of years ago, and of course Gene Hatcher did stop. First hard punches of the fight, but they both missed. But they were thrown um, in anger. Up to this point, he's just been pity patty and uh, trying to figure out Buffus. Buffus, for his part, busy, he's hitting mostly gloves and arms, but he is hitting, and that gives him points. Break! Get out. Bumpus doubling up on the right hand. This has been a bowling, shoving second round. As we come up on 30 seconds remaining of the round. body shot by Starling, but in the meantime, Bumpus has landed 10 or 15 punches, which landed and were unanswered, although they didn't have that strong an effect. And Starling able to succeed with the uppercuts up against the rope. We'll be right back. Oh, so back him up. Back him up. Okay, you gotta back I'm coming, him up. baby. You gotta back him up. You all right? We're all right. We're all right. All right, here's the scoring in the second round. Ladies and gentlemen, judge number one scores it 10-9 Starling. Judge number two scores it 10-9 Starling. And judge number three scores it 10-9 Bumpus. And uh, the crowd gets into it in the earlier fight that we televised on ringside. Benny Pazienza with a decisive unanimous decision over Harry Arroyo. The scores were not announced to the crowd, so we're getting a different type of effect here uh, for this bout. And between rounds, Duva complained bitterly about the head of Starling. Starling's head is in there, and he's belly goading away. Renoni's been told, can't let him keep getting away with that. Yeah, this is the total through two rounds. So on one scorecard, Bumpus uh, in front by two points. Uh, the other two judges have it even over the first two. Unofficially, I agree with the 20 to 18 judge. And apparently, so did the corner of Starling saying, you gave him the first two, now let's get started on the third. It came as a refreshing surprise to him that he had won that round on two scorecards. Step back, step back, let him go. Marlon Starling in the green, 27 years old, from Hartford, Connecticut. He is defending his USBA welterweight championship. And Johnny Bumpus in the black trim with red, 25 years old, out of Tacoma, Washington, now living in Mount Laurel, New Jersey. Bumpus got hit two really hard uppercuts in that infighting. Low blow by Starling. Under a minute to go in this third round. Starling with those slashing type punches. Starling is beginning to outstrengthen Bumpus, who should not stay on the ropes with him and uh, match him strength for strength, but should get out where he can use his height and boxing ability. And Bumpus with a good combination. Final seconds, third round. Good right hand by Bumpus. Bump 
Davis and Starling out of their corners to open up round four on the public address. The scores announced for the third round. All three judges had a 10-9 in favor of Bumpus, who is leading in the bout. Low blows by Starling again. Draw no warning from Vince Renoni. He was on the wrong side of him when he threw that punch. Appears to be a mouse on the side of the right eye of Bumpus. Yeah, it's lumping up. They will put that uh, cold piece of steel on their end swell and work on it with ice. And that's the total through three rounds. So Bumpus by one point on two of the scorecards and now extending to a three-point lead on the other. The difference of the decibel level of the crowd for this fight as compared to our ringside bout with Benny Pazienza, very popular figure out of Cranston, Rhode Island, winning by a decision over Harry Arroyo, and the crowd lifted every time Pazienza landed a punch. I think most of them uh, are uh, absent here, uh, have all crowded into Benny's dressing room. Oh, it looks like there's a cut. Looks like there's a cut over Starling's uh, left brow. Again, Marlin, Marlin, Starling able to muscle Johnny Bumpus into her ropes and try to land those hard uppercuts and body shots, some of which are low and stick his head right into the chest and face of Johnny Bumpus. Bumpus should get out of it. Less than a minute to go in this fourth round. Marlon Starling saying earlier he would look for the knockout, but he certainly would have the stamina to go the distance. Great, great. Get out. Step back. Step back. The stamina and the patience. He just doesn't uh, fluster easily. Keep up. Keep up. Keep it clean. Coming up on 10 seconds to go in this fourth round from the Civic Center in Providence, Rhode Island. We'll be back in just a moment. Following the bell at the end of round four, check this out, extracurricular action. Vinny Renoni, the referee, getting between the two fighters. Now, here comes Lou Duva out of the corner of Bumpus, and watch this. He and Starling having words, and Renoni and Duva in a true super heavyweight battle go to a standoff. I gave that round to Duva 10-9. Ladies and gentlemen, and here is round number one. one scores the fight, the round even. Judge number two scores it 10-9 Bumpus. Right, the scoring and judge number down three on the scores address. it 10-9 Bumpus. Two judges had a 10-9 for Bumpus, and one had it even. I had a 10-9 for Bumpus, and now I have Bumpus ahead 39 to 37 in cumulative score. Opening minute, fifth round, scheduled for 12. With the fight, Dr. Ferdy Pacheco. This is Marv Albert from Providence, Rhode Island. Break, break. As you look at the composite score through four rounds, so Bumpus by one, by two, and by four. But Bumpus may have some trouble seeing out of those eyes. Both eyes are now lumping up and getting swollen. The little nick that we reported over Starling's left brow has been closed up. No evidence of it opening further or being a factor in the fight. Watch your head, says the referee, Vinny Renoni. 
even leap because Bumpus lands many more punches, but Starlings are much more effective and stronger punches. So it's an even exchange you're seeing here. The only one that's winning here is Starling is wearing down Bumpus and his head is becoming a dangerous weapon. spending most of this fifth round on the ropes in Starling's corner. That'll do it for round five. Watch out of here, don't hold. Hey! That's it! Yeah, this time, referee Renoni quick to step in. Uh, you understand? Uh, 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 look at the eyes as they're closing. That's the effect of that yeah, head continuously being in his face. Right? Bumpus's eyes are closing on the other corner. Eddie Aliano has been put to work as he's taking care of the small cuts. And now the announcement of the scoring. Ladies and round and five. Judge number one scores the round. 10-9 Bumpus. Judge number two scores the round. 10-9 Bumpus. And judge number three scores the round, 10-9, Bumpus. So Bumpus continues to win the favor of the judges and continues to pull away on the scorecard. This is round six. It is now at 49-46, and since my cards are pretty well parallel, the judges' cards, they are basically have Bumpus ahead. And that's the official total, Bumpus by two by three and one judge has Bumpus in front by five in command scoring on the 10-point bus system handled by the three judges Al DeVito, Thomas Kazmarek, Charles Spina. What has proved to be the amazing fact is that neither corner is using the scoring as a tool to motivate their fighter or to change the game plan. That is to say, no one in Starling's corner said, you're behind two rounds, three rounds, and you better get started. But pretty soon, they better say something. This type of this type of a performance by Starlin is what cost him the fight for Curry. He just sort of got gets into inactivity, waiting for something to happen. It never does. Now to look at the average rounds per fight for Marlon Starling and Johnny Bumpus. Uh, Starling with 22 knockouts in his 40 bouts. Uh, Bumpus not known as a knockout puncher. Bumpus, it's a case of uh, wearing down the opponent with a, a combination of punches, but he does have 20 knockouts in his 29 professional fights. Bumpus has done well in the end fighting, although it's cost him a toll around the eyes, but he does much better when he's out here boxing. He switches up left-handed, right-handed, he just goes every which way. And he gives angles to uh, Marling, who does not seem to be able to cut off the ring on Bumpus. And a look from overhead, you can see the movement of these two fighters who like to stay on their toes. Alan Starling in the green, Johnny Bumpus in the black. And this is a huge ring. It's 21 by 21 and it's very fast. There's no softness, no give to it. So it's very good for two boxers that are known for their footwork and speed. These two young men have a, a ring that suits them perfectly. Uneventful sixth round. Go we'll get it, baby. Right, back in Providence, ringside position, talking with referee Eddie Ranoni, checking the cuts on uh, Bumpus. 
And uh, as the scoring is announced on the uh, public address, there's concern of the corner of Johnny Bumpus. A doctor has come in and he signaled for it to be stopped, but I mean because of a headbutt, and I don't know what is a great deal of confusion here. Renoni, uh, a complaint's been registered. The doctors come in, looked at uh, Bumpus's eyes. He's way ahead on the scorecard. There was a headbutt in the previous round, an accidental headbutt, and here's Ball and Starling. Boy, he's in dangerous corner. He's over there with Lou Duva, who's just as liable to pop him. Anyway, and here comes Danny Duva, the promoter. And apparently they have called the fight. It said, they said, it's a, look at the top of above his head, wow. a stitch up, a cut up there. It looks like it's about 10 or 15 stitches would take to close that up. That is a big, big rip where a headbutt caused it. Now, what is the ruling here? We'll soon know. But this fight, to all intents and purposes, is over. Now, if, if that headbutt was an unintentional butt and they go to the scorecards, Buffus is ahead on all three cards, and he gets the championship. Ring beginning to fill up with people. All right, the discussion between Vinnie Renoni and uh, the officials, a very deep gash on the forehead of Johnny Buffus. And they will go to the scorecard, apparently, if they do stop the fight. We're still waiting for the official word. And on the scorecard, Bumpus in front by three points, by four, and by six. And the discussion continues. Well, one thing is for sure, look at the size of that rip. I mean, that could only be caused by somebody's head. Yeah, it's a headbutt, and uh, Marlin over to talk to him, and of course, that can be incendiary. All right, here's Let's a look. Let's see if we've got it. And that's uh, how it occurred. All right, here's the announcement. But we will go to the scorecards. All right, Frank Carpano with the announcement that an accidental butt stopped about so they will go to the scorecard and as you know on the scorecard Johnny Bumpus in front Marlon Starling very disappointed looking to walk it off and here's the announcement on the scores ladies and gentlemen we go to the scorecards after six rounds judge Al DeVito scores it 59 56 judge Tan scores it 59 55 Judge Schultz scores at 60-59, a unanimous decision, a new champion in the blue corner, Johnny Bumpus. Well, not the Bumpus. way you want to win a fight, but those are the rules with the accidental butt stopping the bout. And as a result, Johnny Bumpus wins by decision. The bout stopped at the end of six rounds. I don't think they had any other way to do that. The fight could not have continued with a cut that size, Marv. And those are the rules. We live by the rules. And so we have a new champion by the rules. Uh, USBA welterweight crowd has been won by Johnny Bumpus. As we uh, take a look at the butt, heads coming together. Hello, everybody. It's back in the sixth round. Marlon Starling's people complaining that he also suffered a severe butt as the result of uh, coming together with uh, Bumpus. And uh, there is the scoring, and that is how it ends. Not a satisfying ending, but the fight is over. And Ferdy will be in the ring to talk with Starling and Bumpus. In just a moment. Back at the Civic Center, Providence, Rhode Island, Marv Albert with the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco, in a most unusual conclusion. Johnny Bumpus has defeated Marlon Sterling with the fight stopped because of an accidental butt. They went to the scorecard, and with Bumpus in front on the scorecard, he is awarded the fight. Now, under USBA rules, if an accidental butt, butt occurs after the sixth round, they go to the scorecard. Had it occur before the sixth round, it would be ruled as a technical draw. So this occurring after six and as a result 
Johnny Bumpus comes away with the decision. There's the butt. And it opened a deep gash. The ringside physician checked in the corner of Bumpus, looked it over and decided that is it. The fight doctor is in the ring and he is surrounded. Let's go to Ferdy. Marlon, yes. what were your feelings when that was stopped? Well, I think it should have been a, I should have, should have been attention to draw. Oh, every punch was a, a butt. He was dying. He was getting tired. I have, I had um, my strategy to take him out later. I started off real slow. I was very real slow. No air conditioning in the place. You know, I, I wasn't winded at all. He was getting tired, very tired. And like I said, he wouldn't, he wouldn't last a distance. Were you cut in this fight? Yes, I was cut in this fight by a headbutt, as well as he was. So you felt you were getting butt as well as Johnny uh, was getting butt? As well as Johnny, you know, I, I take nothing away from referee. I think the fight should have been a draw and it should have been, we should have, we, we should have uh, fought with both of us being cut, we should have fought to the end. I, don't, I, I really can't justify it for the way the outcome turned out. Have you any recourse to this? You're the manager of the fighter? Yes, I am. We're going to talk to our lawyers and find out if we do have recourse. Marlon got a cut a lot more serious than Johnny's cut over his eye. The referee chose not to bring the doctor in to look at Marlon's cut, yet Johnny gets a cut up on top of the head and he decides to bring the doctor in. I question that. I really do. A valid question and will be decided later at several meetings, I'm sure. Thank you. I'm sorry uh, that you've had that, that turn of fortune, but those are the rules. And now we go to um, Vinny. Renoni, if we can find Renoni, here he comes. And uh, center of some controversy because uh, Renoni's decision was based on the fact that he saw butt. I only saw one headbutt in that fight. In the first round, they were complaining in Dover's corner that it was a headbutt. I wouldn't even call a doctor in. The cut was under control, and there was no need to call a doctor in for it. And he got cut twice by blows that I saw were legal. And uh, I didn't call a doctor in for them. They were high. They weren't articular bleeding. They were stopped and controlled by the both excellent, excellent cut men in both corners. And that last round, I actually saw before the end of the round, their heads meet and the blood squirt. It was an accidental headbutt. It wasn't intentional. And according to the rules, they got to go to the scorecard after the end of the sixth round. And that's that's according to the rules of the USBA, the and that's what you're bound by. Thank you very much, uh, Vincent. Johnny? Bumpus, uh, the new USBA world champion, I'm sure, but his uh, regretfully by a cut. I'm sure he didn't want it that way. But, Johnny, that's a nasty-looking cut. Right. Uh, I mean, they're complaining. If he would have been the one that got cut and they stopped the fight, I was still ahead on points, and that's what counts. I was ahead, and I got the... You were complaining very early in the fight, Lou Duva, the manager trainer of Johnny Bumpus. Did you see a lot of butting at the beginning? Absolutely. He's, he, he continues to get his head under there, and he lifts up. He lifts up with combinations over there. That's why I told I told him before the fight in the dressing room when they gave us the instructions, when they gave us the six round rule. They told us. Uh, they told us. I told him at that time. I told Vinnie Brinton. I told the judges. And I told the U.S. Commissioner over there. Watch his head. He's notorious for his head. Johnny, did you feel that cut pop open when your heads met there? Well, I, I didn't exactly throw the cut right away, but if you look at the tape, you saw how I, the face that I made as we clanked heads, and then the next thing I knew, I was feeling blood running in my eye. Do you think the uh, doctor was right in stopping this fight because of the size and depth of that cut? Well, number one, it's the rule, and number two is, look, 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 look where the cut is. Don't open it anymore. No, okay, look, where, look where it's at. No, it's no. got to come into his eye. Yeah. Am I going to bind the guy? He's got to get hit with the, with the thing. And, the right. and it could have happened the other way, too. The way he was using his head, it could have went either way. It could have went. Thanks. Okay. Uh, crowd is booing. Everybody's unhappy they because move. they can do anything they want. Because this has not gone to its conclusion. But the fact remains that Johnny Bumpus is a new USBA welterweight champion. The bottom line is, I was winning the fight. And he was Six to the five fight on hard judges. And he was coming on. He was coming on. If this guy wants to fight again, hey, there's no problem. Understand? Uh, Let him wear a helmet next time. I'm sure somewhere in the future there is a, a rematch coming up between Johnny Bumpus and the disappointed, disappointed Marlon Starlin. But now back to ringside and Marv Albert. All right, Ferdy. So it's Johnny Bumpus awarded the decision over Marlon Starlin. Now let's take a look at the bout from the point of view of the corner activity. I didn't put it on. Put your hand on his face, not yeah, his chest. Coming. Rub that oh, okay, off okay, now. Okay, Come on. Okay, Let's get your hands up. Okay. Nice and loose. I want you to use them fours. I want you to use them twos. I want you to use them threes. Just warm it up now. Put the 
face I thought I did not see no headbutt. I can't call it. He's in the, the, the clinches there, Vinny. Did not see him. Okay, all right. Oh, he won the first round. He possibly won the second round. He had enough. We gave him enough. We gave him enough. You're working him in there nice. You're working all the combos. And everything is working. The ones are working. The twos are working. Six, seven, six, seven, 42. You understand? He's a 42. You got me covered? Yeah. Now don't load up on the punches. I'll penalize you, I'll pull around. All right. Now don't load up on the punch. You know, just let him go and let him go load up on the last two punches, right? Let's take this guy out. He's just... Right. Oh, this little chunk get confident. Let's okay. be the boss. Moose, you are losing this fight. You understand? Yeah. You better stop punching. You're giving what? him all the confidence in the world. He's what? nothing. Okay. He's nothing. You understand? Yeah. You're the champion. You're going to blow your title. Doc, look at this haircut. He hit him with his head here for Christ's sake. Look at his head. Look at his hair. Right up here. Look at his hair. Christ's sake, wide open over there. Hit him with his head. That was an accidental headbutt. I touched that. Hold it. Doc, what do you think of that? That's going to go into his eye. Oh, and we'll be back.